Hey everyone and welcome back to the series of Flutter with Stripe payments. In the previous video, we saw how we can create a new payment with a new card. And in this one, we are going to take a look at how we can use existing cards to pay with Stripe. And if you have not subscribed the channel so far, please do it so you can be notified about the next videos that I'm going to be posting. And I'm going to talk about Flutter, Angular and whatnot. So now let's get into the first thing. So we saw in the previous video that if we go here and let's say pay via new card, this pops up and if we click cancel, we see a message which is not so user friendly. So we actually can capture this platform exception and we can show a user friendly message instead of this. So let's see how we can do that. So first of all, I'm going to go to my payment service and here when we are getting the error, we can actually before this catch put something like on and then we will basically say platform exception. Now when we do this, we also have to provide a catch and here we will have error and then here we can basically put the condition that we want here. So we are actually going to use this at multiple places. So what I'm going to do is that I can simply say return and then we can name a function here. For instance, we can say get platform exception error result and here we can pass the error. Now we'll go below and then we will basically create this function. And obviously this is going to be something like stripe service dot because this function will be a static function as well. So if I go here, I can say static and then this function and then this will basically receive an error. So I can simply say error and here I can place the logic. So there could be multiple platform error messages. So we can take a string and we'll name it message. And here we can provide a default message like something went wrong. And then we are going to check the error code. So we can say if error.code equals cancelled. So this is what actually is received when we go here and then cancel the UI for the car. So in this case, the message will be transaction cancelled. And that's enough. Now we will finally return the new Stripe transaction response with the error. So we can simply say Stripe transaction response. And here we can return the message and we can provide success false. So now that we have got this, this should actually be working. So I'm going to save this and now we'll try it out. All right. So now if I go here and click this and if I click cancel, you can see that it just says transaction canceled. And that is because it actually fell into this condition that we put here. So now this has been taken care of. And now we have to talk about how we can use the existing cards to pay via Stripe. So what we can do is that we can go to pages and then existing cards. And here we already had the function which we called on tap. So you can see that here we have the ink well and then we are using pay via existing card. And here we have all of this happening here. So instead of 150, I'm just gonna basically put 2500 here. So this will be 25 US dollars. And below what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to pass the card. So first of all, let's go here and then we will basically change the definition of the card here. So this card will be actually credit card. And this is something that we get out of the Stripe payments SDK. So you can see that this is coming from the Stripe payment package. Now, if we go here, we have to actually create this card. So what we can do here is that we can say credit card and then we will basically call it Stripe card. And I'm going to import the package here. And now we can basically construct this card. So what we need for this card is to basically say credit card. And here we have to provide a bunch of things. First of all, we have to provide the number of the card. And this can be simple as card dot number because this card actually has a number, which is card number. So what we can do here is that instead of card dot number, we can say card number. And now we have to provide two more things which are required by the payment SDK. So we have to provide the expiry month and we also have to provide the expiry year. So these are the two things that we need to provide. So 
you can see that we already have this expiry date here, but we don't have expiry month and year separated from this. So what we can do is that we can basically use this string and split it so we can get these values out separately. So for that, what we can do is that we can say int dot parse. So we are going to parse this string, but before parsing, we will basically split it. So we can say card and here we will say expiry date. So this is the string that we need to parse, but what we will do is that we will split it and then we'll split it by slash. So this will be the separator for this split. And then we will basically get an array of two elements. At the zero index, we will have this. And at one index, we will have this. So first of all, what we can do is that we can simply say zero, but instead of duplicating the code, I can just have this once. So what I can do here is that I can simply say var expiry array equals this. So I'm just gonna remove this and then we can simply use expiry array here and then I'm gonna do the same for the year as well. So now that we have set this value, we need to provide this card instead of this card. So you can see that now we are actually providing a credit card here and this all makes sense. Now the next step is to actually implement in the payment service, how do we go forward? So if I go down, this is the method that we have to use. So we are getting the card, we are getting the amount and currency. So first of all, we need to create the payment method. And actually, I'm just going to copy paste all of this code. So we don't have to repeat everything. So I'm just going to copy paste this. And now what we have to do is that we also have to make this an async function. Now let's talk about how do we create this payment method. Also, this will be a future instead. Now, this payment method will basically be an existing cards payment method. So for that, we have already a function. So instead of this, what we can do is that we can use create payment method. And in here, we have to provide a payment method request. So we'll say payment method request. And this request can have the token or the card. So we are actually going to provide the card here. So we can say card, card, and now this is all good. So we are creating the payment method first, then we are creating the payment intent. And also after that, we are confirming the payment intent with the payment method ID and the client secret that we got from the payment intent. So the rest of the step is actually very simple and it's all the same. In the pay with new card, we were creating a new card from the card form payment request. But in here, we are using an existing card for creating the payment method. So now that we have done this, let's refresh and see if this works. All right, so we are getting some errors. Let's see what's wrong. So you can see that we have this red here. So I'm gonna go here and you can see that this is basically saying response.success and that is because we are not doing an await here. So let's use await here. And we also have to make this an async function. Now let's just save this and try this out. All right, so before I try this pay via existing card, I actually checked that one of the cards that I have is not valid, which is this one. So let's go to the testing data and copy some card from there. So I am right now at the testing page and I'm gonna scroll down and I'm just going to copy this first master card. And then we are just going to replace this in the code. So in the code, I'm gonna go above and just replace this. And now we can basically use this. So I'm gonna refresh. And now if I go to pay via existing card, and then if I select this one, you can see that we get this transaction successful message and then this pops out to the home page. Now let's go and see if the transaction was successful. So I am on my dashboard right now and you can see that the time is 2318 and right now the time is 2319. So this is the transaction that we just did. And if I open it, you will see that it was done via a payment method having a MasterCard and this is the last four digits. So you can see that this was successful. Awesome, so now you can see that we are able to pay via a new card and also via an existing card. But the UX right now is not really amazing because if I click this, you can see that I have to wait a lot and then it shows me the message once the transaction is successful. Now this is not a really good user experience. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to show a loader while the transaction is in process. And for that, I'm gonna use an external package. 
So the package that I'm going to use is called progress dialog. And if I scroll down, this is how it looks. So we can actually provide a custom message to it. And then we can basically add this to the dependencies and then use it. So I'm just going to copy this. In fact, I'm going to go to installing and then I'm going to copy the latest version from here. And now in the code, I'm going to go to pubspec.yaml and I'm just going to paste this here. Now I'm right now not sure if this is going to show a native dialogue or not, but if that's the case, then we have to basically restart the flutter run via the simulator. All right. So now I'm running the app with the package and what I can do now is that I can basically import the package up top. So I'm basically going to import it here. And now we can basically add this to this logic of paying by existing card. So before anything happens, what we can do is that we can create a progress dialogue. And then we can say here progress dialogue. And here we can provide the context. Now that we have created it, we need to provide a custom message to it. And the way we do that is that we can say dialogue.style and here we can basically pass some value. So we can say message and here we can say please wait. Now the next thing is to actually show it. So we can say await dialogue.show. Now this will start showing the dialogue from the beginning of the transaction. And now we have to hide it once everything is done. So we can go here and before we show the snack bar, we can simply say await dialogue dot hide. Now this is being done for the existing card. So I'm just going to save this and reload it and then we'll test it out. Awesome. So I can go now here and select an existing card. And for instance, if I select the first one, you can see this loader coming up. And then once the transaction is done, you can see that it was hidden. The snack bar was shown and then we got back to the first page. Now this is done for the existing cards. We have to do the same for the new card logic. So I can just copy paste this one really quick. And then I'm going to go to the home page. And here what we can do is that we can create a function pay via new card. And here we are going to make this async. We are going to paste this here. We are also going to import the package. So I'm just going to copy it from the existing cards page. So I'm going to copy this, go home page paste it here. And now what we can do is that we can basically call the function instead of this whole logic. So we can simply say pay via new card and we can provide the context here and that's all. So let's say we have the function here and then we can say build context and here we can provide the context and now we are basically going to paste the code here. So we have 150 USD here and then we are also showing the dialog. And once we are done, we can simply say await dialog dot hide. Now that we have said this, let's try it out. Cool. So now if I click pay via new card, I can fill the value. And now if I hit done, you can see that we have this dialog here and we are waiting. And now the dialogue was hidden and we saw the successful message. So now we have a really good UI. We also have a really good user experience for the user. So the user can see a loader while the transaction is happening. And if something goes wrong, the user can then see the message as well. So let's see what happens if something goes wrong. So I'm going to go to existing cards and here I'm just going to change some particular number. So instead of five, five, we could say, six, six, and then let's save this and try this out. Cool. So now I can go to pay via existing card. I'm going to select this one. We got the loader and now you can see something went wrong. So the whole process is actually really good. We see the loader, we wait, and then the loader is hidden and then we see the snack bar. So I actually hope that you learned a lot of good techniques in these three video series and you learned how to easily integrate Stripe payments in a Flutter application. So if you like my video, do share, do subscribe to the channel and follow me for more videos. Thank you.